Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, we have something new for you, a new set of tools. This time we're back to ZBrush and what I'm going to present to you is a brand new set of brushes for environments. These are mostly uh, rocky surfaces but also some brushes are concrete and a mix of concrete and pebbles. Now all of the brushes are made from the real world data so this means that the rock surfaces are taken from the real world locations. This will allow you to achieve realistic or semi-realistic results. Now before I go on I just want to say you know looking back uh, to when I started doing 3D digital techniques in general were something new and a lot of the older artists who are working uh, especially in films industries were kind of scared of this new technology because many of them were working in traditional mediums such as clay and you can imagine when something new appears such as ZBrush or back then it was Mudbox they see it as a threat to their jobs and recently we have something similar going on and that is AI and I myself uh, did uh, some testing with it and then I realized no it cannot replace what we artists do it cannot replace our imagination it cannot replace our need to create you know because when I was generating some of the visuals with the AI and I did a lot of them I felt kind of bored I felt kind of disattached I don't know if that is the right word. I felt uh, uh, this distance from the creative process. And I said, I don't need this thing, you know. I I really feel good when I'm using my two hands and uh, creating. So what I'm saying this is if you still feel that you should be creating in the old-fashioned way, being the traditional technique, uh, like sculpting in a real clay or digital clay just go for it you know continue doing it you don't have to go with this ai path i'm not saying you shouldn't but if the idea of you using this new technology uh, make you uncomfortable you don't have to do it just stick to what you love doing and i'm sure that you'll be fine this is uh, mostly what we'll be doing in this video this uh, rock design you'll see with this new set of brushes it is very very easy process and the reason why it was so easy to create such a complex design is the fact that these brushes are really really high quality with some additional perks so please join me and if you have any questions leave them below or join our Discord group. The link to download free brushes will be below the video. Take care. So I have already prepared an object. Uh, this is nothing but a sphere, uh, which I've cut to separate it, and then did some more cutting and some more merging, and we end up with something like this with separate uh, polygroups. Now I don't need these polygroups anymore, and I will do some more cutting. So let me just go here to the document, just remove a fall off in the background, and I can also turn off poly on edges so let's do some more cutting select the knife curve brush which is a ideal candidate for uh, this kind of operation I think I need to uh, dynamesh everything like so and now we can perform the cutting as planned so I'm just uh, preparing this object just so it makes more sense especially uh, for what I'm planning to do with it and that's to show you uh, the new set of brushes, which I think uh, are really, really, really amazing. So i also smooth this a bit. So this preparation is very useful because you're thinking uh, about shapes. Sometimes it's nice to start just sculpting, but uh, really very often you get lost and you don't know anymore what you're doing so this is much faster because just to cut all these shapes uh, connect them and uh, pile them one on top of uh, another really took me only 
five minutes. You can also use move brush, make it bigger and do something like, like this. Just to get interesting uh, silhouette, you can also preview it here. You now type of rocks that you might find somewhere in a, in a desert. I think this will work. I think I'll cut this here as well, like so, and maybe even this, like so. Uh, before we move forward with uh, using the new set of brushes, let's just do a bit more adjustment. So first of all, I already know that there are some flying polygons around and this can cause us some trouble. So for example, if I go here and go to poly groups and press auto groups and hide this group, which already means that there are some flying polygons and press F to frame it, you see, and this junk can really cause some serious trouble in the future. So we'll go here under the geometry, we can go to modify topology and delete hidden. Now we can also duplicate this object one time, so we can use this same shape for the new rocky asset. Also, let's check the, the density of the polygons. We'll need more. I can already see that. So we'll subdivide this. But before we do that, I'm going to change the matcap to something like this, matcap gray. And then I'm going to also color it a bit. I'll go here to the color menu and change color to something like this. You'll see why, maybe like this, maybe even darker and fill object. Now the object is uh, colored. We can smooth some of the areas. We don't need it to be this edgy. This can also cause some problems. And the reason we don't need it is because we're gonna get these crisp details from the brush or the brushes that we're gonna use. And before we use brushes, we can also do something under the geometry menu. And that's, where is it? Clay polish, which also helps us bring back some of the sharp edges. It won't touch uh, all the smoothed edges, only those that are slightly smooth. We're happy with this. Now we have a rather simple stylized rock, which will soon become a lot more realistic. The number of polygon this is 200,000, 250,000, which is uh, not enough. I think we'll subdivide it a few times, so all the way to 17 million and delete lower. Let's uh, start playing with the new brushes so you can finally see why I'm so hyped about them. Let's go and try this one. And I'll also go down here under poly paint and turn off colorize just so you can see the difference when I turn it on. So, okay, now I also get this really harsh and ugly edge. Uh, this is something I don't want. Let me just open the alpha uh, menu, go under the modify and make this uh, radial fade a bit stronger and see if it helps and lower down the intensity a bit. Now let's do this again. It's much better. Now you can see with one brush and you have more than 50 available, you can get some interesting random details. Now what I like to do is this to use the fall off mask. So you choose drag rectangle and then the fall off mask and then mask the side you're not gonna paint on or sculpt on to be more precise. Just mask it a few times. And I also like to do it from the bottom. Press shift to rotate object and then just add mask here as well. This is just so we don't get deformation where we don't want it. Let's start uh, adding details with the first brush from the set. That will be Zed's Rock 86. So you just have to be careful, you know, where you place your strokes. Not too careful, of course, but careful enough not to cause something that you'll have to spend more time fixing than you did on sculpting. So let's go back and let us do something uh, even smarter and that's using layers, new layer. And now we can start sculpting. If we now turn on the colorize under the poly paint, you will see what we did so far with both surface uh, details, displacement and texturing. 
And this is what's really powerful about this set of brushes. You can add those intricate details and paint texture at the same time, which really helps you later on. It doesn't matter if you'll be texturing here inside ZBrush or if you'll be doing it in an external application. You will have this base texture that will help you as a guide or as a base layer of color to continue with your work. I'll add a few more of these. And then we're gonna pick another brush and continue playing. So I'll unmask it now. Actually, I could have just changed the mask and I'm gonna pick another brush. Let's use maybe something like this. This one is called Zets Rock 85 and let's start working. I might change the matte cap to something that will reveal a bit more, more details. Okay, let's use this. You can adjust the alpha a bit further. For example, we can increase the contrast, lower down the intensity, and maybe even increase the value of uh, radial fade. So the edges are even more protected. You see how he here we get some kind of jagged surface and there's something we don't want although it's not such a big of a deal when you're doing rocks cliffs and that kind of assets which are like very forgiving you can also uh, push it in the surface with the uh, pressing alt and since these rocks were not exposed to high amount of uh, an erosion there won't be any problems it will still look natural uh, what i'm also trying to do is to pick this direction of the of these edges sometimes is easy sometimes it's not i guess it's the practice that makes perfect let's move to the next one i might use one of these stone wall let's just see how it looks uh, now the color although you can change the color of the texture right inside the zbrush so it's not uh, such a big deal let's move to another layer and i'm just gonna change the brush to something different still similar maybe this one yeah and then i'll just increase the intensity a bit and contrast a bit and i'm gonna use this just on this side and this side let's see how it works Of course, we'll change uh, to try a few more of the brushes. Also nice, this is Zetsrock 89. Let's try another one, Zerok 13. What do you do, Zerok 13? Let's see. Okay, I like the fact that we can, you know, combine different textures with uh, different saturation, different color taken from different rocks. We can also change the radial fade and also lower down the intensity. And let's add a bit of those details here. Of course, we can turn off Z add and just add color if we want to. For example, the rock might be a bit more grayish and reddish here and maybe add a bit of uh, this yellow orange in the bottom. We're not changing the surface now because we have turned off the surface deformation. We're just coloring it a bit just to make it look more interesting. And as I already mentioned, you can change the current texture that you're using. So for example, if I go here, say adjust colors you know i can change the hue and the saturation so maybe to go to something even blue like so and lower down the saturation and press ok and then i'll also lower down the rgb intensity to maybe something like this and then apply it here on top so once again i'm not changing anything with the with the surface detail i'm just adding color I think this looks good. Now we can still play a bit. I can maybe rotate it like this and use that same gradient mask I used so many times so far. Use the move tool. Bit crazy, I know. Who cares? We have a nice looking rock.
So there we go. This is how you would do the rock. In the future videos, if you want, I might do color baking, uh, retopology, and other cool things. It really depends uh, what you're mostly interested in. If you consider how much time was spent in this, then I think we did a good job here. Okay, now that we're done with these uh, two, we can see what else we can do with this uh, new set of brushes. So uh, let me just select maybe another tool. Actually, I'm going to select one of these pebble wall brushes, maybe this one here. I'm just going to test something. Let's say I want to make object from alpha. So for that, I can go to make 3D. Let's just see what do we get if we press this make 3D button at this low low resolution, low depth, and also with a, a bit of smooth, so make 3D. And this is what we get. I don't think we need both sides, so I'm gonna repeat this process and just turn off this double-sided and make 3D. Okay, now we have this, I'm gonna rotate it. Okay, now I have this and I think I'll create a pile of maybe pebbles or dirt on the ground. So let me just check this matte cap might work we'll see i'm gonna smooth it a bit not that much though and also i'm gonna duplicate it and i'm gonna increase the resolution to maybe three and a half million we can already test this brush you see this already looks nice it's already already good enough for what we need Let's just color this a bit and now let's go back to one of those bevel brushes, this one, like so. This was actually taken from the wall, but it should work for our needs. The effect is a bit too strong, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lower down the intensity all the way through here. This should work. Let's try with the one that has larger pebbles. And this is the cool thing about it because I can combine similar brushes. I want to show you something else. I'll use the same object even in the same subtool. I just want to do something with this gradient mask I like using so much. Make this a bit... I can go back to pebbles, any of these. It will work and we'll get a nice pile. What I also can do, I can use one of the concrete brushes, so for example this one. So you see, you get this concrete surface. If you don't want to get this kind of a curvature going on here, what you can do is go to the alpha settings, lower down the radial fade so it's kind of flat, lower down the intensity, you lower down the intensity here. You can get a much more subtle effect. You can do anything in between. So let us uh, increase the intensity of the alpha here. And then what we can do, we can mask the edge of this uh, object. Do something like this. Like so. And then we can apply this concrete details. So let's go back to this. Radial fade to maybe something like this. Let's test it. Cool have a nice pile. Let's lower down the intensity here. It's even better. So you can use this uh, on the ground of your terrain and it will give this really realistic uh, look to it. I think the textures do help a lot here.